I'm really excited because a couple of friends of mine shared with me the location of a bird that might be the only one of its kind. Uh, nobody really knows what this bird is. It's not well documented. Scientists don't really have any kind of information on it. I did a lot of research. I can't really seem to find too much. And so I went out to find that bird. And of course, I found all kinds of other crazy stuff in the process. And one of the images that I captured that even wasn't even of this bird, the, the weird one, I just put it on Twitter and it was shared by BBC Earth of all people or tweeted. I guess that's kind of the same thing. And look at this. It's going crazy. It's been viewed over 100,000 times, this picture. So wait till you see what this picture is because I think this day of searching for this really rare unknown bird might be the craziest bird photography day I have ever had. Come on, let's go check this out. The morning sun rises as a gentle breeze blows through the tall cattails. Birds eager to feed start their daily routines while I search for my mystery bird. The gentle morning breeze recedes as the sun lights the stage for my first bird of the day, a beautiful black skimmer. With my D850 and Nikon 500F4 in hand, I peer through my viewfinder to get a better look. The current conditions are perfect for capturing these incredible birds as they live up to their names by gracefully skimming the surface of the water. The bird silently whizzes right past my face at an amazing speed, its thin beak slicing through the water like a hot knife through butter. A fast shutter speed of 1 2,000th of a second helps me freeze time as the bird's thin hydrodynamic beak hits a fish causing its head to violently snap backwards. This crazy behavior is how this amazing bird catches its food, but sometimes it misses. In this series of shots, you can clearly see a minnow just to the right of the bird's beak. This evasive maneuver just granted this tiny fish another day in the salt marsh. On the next pass, this incredible bird gives us a nice head-on shot. Look how thin its bill is. That's just amazing pan out so we can see that impressive wingspan as the bird lowers its beak into the water. And we have impact as the bird's eyes close and its head snaps backwards. Was it successful? No. It would appear that this run produced nothing but weeds. In the animal world, determination is the key to life and determination is often well rewarded. The skimmer's beak has come into contact with something once again. Was it successful this time? Yes. Look at this amazing shot that plainly illustrates the balancing act of life. On one level, you have the black skimmer holding onto the fish so that it can survive. On the other level, you have this fish that it's trying to escape so that it can survive. What an amazing example of the food chain at work. But wait a minute. What's that bird in the background? Is that, could, is that our mystery bird? We get our first glimpse of our mystery bird. And from this angle, it appears to be a young little blue heron who is changing from its white face to blue, but I can't really tell. And it doesn't look like this bird is going to cooperate at the moment, so I move on and I find this beauty. Here is the amazing headless egret. Oh, wait. I mean reddish egret. And as you can plainly see, the conditions are perfect for capturing some beautiful reflection shots of this incredible bird. Here are the camera settings I used for this entire series of shots. I was shooting wide open at f4 because a huge cloud bank was blocking all the light. This helped me get a little bit more light into the camera, but at the cost of a very, very narrow depth of field. I had to make sure the bird was almost perfectly parallel to me and my lens. I was using auto ISO and I pushed the exposure compensation up plus 0.7. This bumped up the ISO a little, but I needed that extra light. And you might be wondering why I chose such a fast shutter speed for this motionless bird. Reddish egrets don't sit still for long and I didn't want to miss any of the action. That fast shutter speed would help me freeze time when this bird decided to run. And of course it did. This is one bird I could photograph all day. They are absolutely amazing to watch because they are so full of life and they very rarely slow down, as you can see from this series of images. You will need a fast shutter speed and a good tracking or panning technique if you plan on capturing their classic wing displays like these. This bird knows that it can cut the reflection on the water by throwing its wings over its head. How crazy is that? You would think other birds would catch on, but this style of hunting is somewhat unique to this awesome reddish egret, even if it means they come up with nothing more than a few water drops. 
In this last shot, a nice gentle rain helped set the mood as the reddish egret decided it was time for a break. I took this opportunity to see if I could locate our mystery bird once more. And here's that mystery bird, and once again, it's giving me the cold shoulder. I just need this bird to move a little so we can get a better look. There, that's much better, but it's still just a little too far away. And it's definitely not a little blue heron. From this angle, it looks more like a snowy egret. Let's have a closer look. That's much better, but what am I looking at? It's hunting like a tricolored heron, but it looks like a snowy egret. Let's slow things down a bit. Yeah, this is definitely a unique bird. I've never seen anything like it. It acts like a tricolored heron, but looks more like a snowy egret. But then you have that light blue, almost purple coloring in the feathers that is so prominent in the tricolored heron. So what is this thing? Let's get some pictures so we can really see this bird a little better and compare it to some snowy egret and tricolor heron shots. And here's our first good shot of this mystery bird. And wow, what a gorgeous bird. It's got an almost elegant look to it. I think one thing is for certain, this bird is beautiful. Let's see if we can match it to another species. Here's a young little blue heron. And I think it's safe to say that our mystery bird is no little blue heron. Let's do another comparison. On the left is our mystery bird. On the right is a tricolored heron. Both birds are exhibiting the same hunting style or technique. They both have that long skinny neck and they both have that group of long feathers coming off the top of the head. The darker color on our mystery bird looks just like the regular color on our tricolored heron. The beak is a different color, but it appears to be the same length and overall shape. Very interesting. Let's compare our mystery bird to a snowy egret. On the left is our mystery bird, and on the right is a snowy egret. I just so happen to have a couple of awesome shots of each bird tossing back a minnow. Go figure. I see a lot of similarities here, especially in the face, but the snowy egret on the right has a different tail and a different style of feathers on its head. Let's take a closer look at each bird's head. Again, our mystery bird is on the left and the snowy egret is on the right. And in this example, their heads look very different. This could just be a difference in plumage due to the time of year each shot was taken. The eyes look a little different too, but this could just be the lighting. Snowy egrets are known for their golden feet. And in fact, some people call these birds golden slippers. So let's compare the bird's feet and see what we get. Ah, our mystery bird has some yellow on its feet, just like the snowy egret, but it isn't quite an exact match. The foot on our mystery bird looks much larger than the snowy egrets, and the legs of the snowy egret have yellow along the backside. The legs on our mystery bird are solid black. Let's compare the legs of our mystery bird to the legs of a tricolored heron. Here's a nice comparison shot with our mystery bird on the left and a tricolored heron on the right. The feet do look very similar, as does the overall body structure. The plumage on the head is a little different, with the mystery bird having some longer feathers. So what is this bird? I'm not too sure. It looks like it might be some sort of hybrid cross between a snowy egret and a tricolored heron. It is quite unusual for two different bird species to breed, but it does happen. While I was capturing these shots, I was with another photographer who had been observing this bird for four to five days. He commented on how this bird's behavior was just like that of a tricolored heron. It hunted the same way and even made the same frustrated sounds when it would miss a fish. Our mystery bird was also extremely defensive of its territory. If any other tricolored herons came within 50 feet or 20 meters of this bird, it would chase them off in a matter of seconds. This is something snowy egrets are notorious for. They always claim an area and have no problems defending it. What was interesting though was this bird just seemed to want to chase away tricolored herons. Regardless of what kind of bird this is, I think we can all agree that it is a gorgeous animal worthy of whatever label people decide to give it. It would be nice if it could find a mate and pass on its unique looks and behavior. Thanks mystery bird for an incredible photo shoot. When I started making this video, it was about 12 hours or so. It takes me a little while to get these done. Plus I went to sleep, so it's been a little bit. So I told you I shared a video on Twitter that was kind of going crazy. And look at it now, almost 12 hours later, it's up to 203,000, I guess, views and 17,000 engagements. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so anyways, what was this mystery picture uh, that's going so crazy? You would think that, you know, those black lace skimmers, no. That cool reddish egret, no. That really crazy hybrid bird, no. 
So when I was done with the hybrid, I packed up all my gear and I drove out. And as I was driving out, I drove up on this. This is a great blue heron. And yes, that is a very large snake swinging like a clock pendulum from the bird's beak. When I drove up on this, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I thought to myself, this great blue heron has bitten off more than it can chew. And I knew I was witnessing an incredible moment, but I had no idea just how rare the situation was. There's nothing rare about a herring eating a snake. What makes this moment extremely rare is the actual snake. I'm not 100% positive, but I'm being told that this snake is an endangered salt marsh snake, which makes total sense because I was in a salt marsh. If this is true, the odds of witnessing this experience are almost a million to one. Let's get some pictures. In this first shot, you can see that nictitating membrane over the great blue heron's eye. This adds an extra layer of protection to the bird's eye for moments just like this. And here's the shot that I shared on Twitter that's going pretty crazy. I think this image clearly illustrates the struggle of life in the animal world. All the colors complement themselves, the lighting was nice, and I really like the single drop of water clinging to the snake's belly. But there were more images from this series that I really want to share. How about a nice close-up view where you can clearly see how the snake has coiled around this great blue heron's beak. And look at that snake's tongue sticking out. Absolutely incredible. But the snake wasn't giving up without a fight. With its mouth wide open, the snake lines up for a chance to bite the heron's face. The heron sees the incoming threat and violently shakes its head to prevent the devastating bite. The snake does everything within its power to sink its teeth into the heron's head, but this heron has dealt with a snake before, and it knows the exact location to hold the snake's body so that it can't physically reach the bird's face. Talk about smart. This bird knows exactly what it's doing, and it isn't about to lose its prized snake dinner. So which animal won this epic battle of life? I wish I knew. The great blue heron decided to take this snake for a nice flight over the mangroves where it disappeared into the salt marsh, never to be seen again. What an amazing experience. Wow, that was pretty crazy. What do you think? Leave a comment and let me know what you thought of all the crazy footage in this video and share this video if you found it interesting. Um, maybe somebody can help ID the bird. Maybe somebody can help ID that snake. Either way, it was uh, really, really cool. Click the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. And always leave comments. I love hearing what everybody has to say. And until the next video, see you later.